But all these fractions, it's pretty difficult to work with. So what we're going to talk about is how do we clear those fractions? How do we get rid of those fractions so we just have integers and whole numbers to work with, right? Well, what you want to do is you want to look at all the denominators, right? So when you look at the denominators, we've got 4, 2, and 2. Okay, so when we're looking at this uh, first equation, what's the common denominator? Meaning, like, if we were going to get a common denominator with these fractions, what's that lowest common denominator? Now, a lot of students will mistakenly say 2 because they're thinking, oh, 2 goes into 4 and 2 goes into 2. But what we're looking for is the smallest number that 2 would divide into and 4 would also divide into. And the smallest number that that would be, in this case, would be 4. So what we're going to do is we're going to multiply the whole equation by 4. Now, when you multiply this whole equation by 4, what you're going to do is you're going to distribute that 4 to the, every term, okay, left and right sides, because you want to keep that equation balanced. Now, another way to do this, and I think a lot of students uh, might find this a little bit easier, is when you're multiplying by 4, you're really multiplying by 4 over 1, because anything divided by 1 is itself, right? So what I'm going to do is right next to each one of these fractions, I'm going to write 4 over 1, 4 over 1, and 4 over 1. Okay, so you're with me so far? The reason I did that is because you can see we can do some cross-reducing, numerator and denominator. You see those fours are canceling out one another. So you're really left with uh, 1 over 1, which is just 1, and that just gives us x. Okay. Over here, you can see 4 and 2, we can cross-reduce. 2 goes in here once, 2 goes into 4 twice. 2 times 1 is 2, 1 times 1 is 1, 2 divided by 1 is 2. So we have 2y, and over here, we can also cross-reduce. Okay. And we get negative 1 times 2 is negative 2, 1 times 1 is 1, negative 2 over 1 is negative 2. So you can see we have effectively cleared the denominators. We've gotten rid of those fractions. We just have integers now, which are easier to work with, right? Now, in the second equation here, what can we multiply by to clear the denominators? What do you think? Well, you can see this has a denominator of 3. These ones you can think of as having a denominator of 1, okay? Because anything divided by 1 is itself, right? So what's that lowest common denominator, meaning what's the smallest number that 1 divides into and 3 also divides into? Okay, if you said 3, you're absolutely right. So what we're going to do is we're going to multiply everything by 3. And remember, 3 is like 3 over 1. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to, again, write 3 over 1, 3 over 1 next to each one of those terms. Remember, the terms are separated by minus or plus, And you want to make sure you're multiplying everything by 3. Not just the left side, not just the right side, every, every term, right? Okay, so now notice what happens. 3x divided by 1 is just 3x. Over here, you can see the 3's are cross-reducing. We're left with negative 5 over 1, which is negative 5y. And over here, we have 21. Okay, perfect. So now we're in business, right? We can see we've got just integers, and we want to try to solve the system. So what we're going to do here is we're going to try to do the elimination method. Now, what's the elimination method? Well, elimination method is you try to multiply one of the equations by a constant such that when you add it to the other equation that either the x's cancel out or the y's cancel out. So I'll have links to other videos about solving systems of equations if you want more practice. But just to show you here, let's multiply everything in this equation by negative 3. Because if we do that, I'll write it right down here, we're going to get negative 3x, negative 6y, and negative 3 times negative 2 is positive 6. Now when we add, see how those x's are canceling one another out? Because one's positive, one's negative. And over here, we've got 27. Okay, so now, let's see. So, okay, so this is coming out to a little bit of a strange answer, but that's okay. So we're going to divide everything by negative 11. So that's 27 over negative 11. Okay, that's our y value. Now, if we want to solve for x, what do we do? Well, we can put it back into any one of the equations, but pick an easy one. I'm going to pick this uh, first one here because you can see the numbers are quite small. So we have x plus 2 times 27 over negative 11 equals negative 2. And I'm just going to distribute the 2, so that's going to be 54 over negative 11. Okay, so 2 is like 2 over 1. Sometimes students have trouble with these fractions, but just turn a whole number into a fraction by putting it over 1, so the numerators line up and the denominators line up. Then you just multiply uh, horizontally, right? And so then this equals 2 over 1. We're going to subtract, actually, this is a negative 54 over 11, so we're going to do the opposite. We're going to add 54 over 11 to both sides, right? So plus 54 over 11. We have to get common denominators. The common denominator is 11, so I'm going to multiply this by 11 over 11. So we have negative 22 plus 54 all over 11. So let's see, that comes out to, uh, what is that? That is uh, 32 elevenths. Okay, that's what x equals. And so now you can see our final answer. We want to write it like a coordinate, x comma y. We have 32 over 11, 27 over negative 11. That's the uh, point or the coordinate where the two lines would cross if you were to graph both of these 
lines. Now you can turn these into mixed numbers if you like. You can turn them into decimals if you want to get an approximation in round. But we'll just leave it like that for right now. So that's how you would work with fractions. How about example number two where you're working with some decimals? Well, in this case, what we want to do is we want to clear the decimals. So what can we multiply by to get rid of those decimals? What do you think? Well, in the first one, see, wouldn't it be great if this decimal point was right here? So to move it to here, we would actually have to multiply by 100. Because when you multiply by 100, you move that decimal point two places to the right. So let's do that. We're going to multiply everything by 100. Remember, you're distributing it to each term. So that's going to actually move this two places two places, we're going to have to put a placeholder here, a zero, and then this one also two places. So what we have is we have 5x minus 10y equals negative 45, right? This one here, we only really need to multiply by 10 because that'll move this decimal place one to the right, one to the right, one to the right. Here we need a placeholder, right? So in this case, we just multiplied everything by 10. So 28x plus 12y equals 20. Okay, so now we're in business. So Again, let's use the elimination method. And what we're going to do is we're going to try to either eliminate the x's or the y's. So that when we add the two equations together, either the x's or the y's cancel out. This one's a little bit more challenging because let's look at the y's. What's the smallest number that 10 goes into and 12 goes into? 60, right? So what I'm going to do is I'm going to multiply this top one by 6 to make this negative 60, the bottom equation by 5 to make this positive 60. This way when we add, the y's are going to cancel each other out. So let's go ahead and do that to the top equation. We're distributing the 6. That gives us 30x minus 60y equals, uh, let's see, what does that come out to? That's negative 240 plus 30, so negative 270, right? And then here we're distributing the 5 to each term, each term in the uh, equation, right? So 5 times 28 is how much? 140. Uh, x, we're getting some large numbers here, plus 60y equals 100. Okay, but notice what happens when we add, the y's are canceling, right? Because one's negative, one's positive. This gives us 170x equals uh, negative 170. Divide by 170, you can see x is coming out to negative 1. That worked out pretty nice, right? All we have to do to solve for y is put this x equals negative 1 back into any one of the equations, doesn't matter which one, and solve for y. Let's go ahead and use this one here because the numbers are a little bit smaller. So I'm going to say 5. Instead of x, I'm going to put in negative 1. Okay. And then what we're going to do is this is a negative 5, so I'm going to do the opposite. I'm going to add 5 to both sides. So that comes out to negative 10y equals negative 40. Divide both sides by negative 10. That's going to give us y equals positive 4. So our answer is negative 1 comma 4. Now, if you want to 